Hello and welcome everybody to today's small talk about sustainability at the Tour de Suisse. Um, I have with me Manuel Lonfa from Gambion, who is helping us with uh, the project and the strategy all around sustainability at this major sport event of the Tour de Suisse. So, hello, Hi. Manuel. How are you? Nice that you're here. Thank and, you for having um, me. We have a really important topic uh, called sustainability at the Tour de Suisse. Uh, why is sustainability so important uh, to us and what are we going to do uh, to maintain or to reduce our footprint of the whole event? Cycling usually is very ecological, it's a, an ecological sport, but why are CO2 emissions for the Tour de Suisse still an important topic? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so, yes, cycling is, is really, really sustainable as a mode of transport. So I encourage always everybody to think about using a bike or walking to go around cities. Now, when you think about events such as a major cycling race for professional athletes, there's lots of things that come into play. So for example, uh, you have about 40 teams coming from various places around the world. They also have uh, a number of crews with them. So we're talking about hundreds of people with cars, support vehicles. And then of course, there's also many spectators, the, the, the order of hundreds of thousands a day coming to the race. And of course they come with, with, with trains, but also with cars. And so the mobility aspect generates uh, quite a bit of emission, unfortunately. And uh, despite the sustainable na nature of, of cycling itself. Yeah, I see that there is a, there is a concept in this um, sustainability projects, which is um, which is a part of or divided into three scopes. That's something you often hear also mm -hmm. in the media. Um, scope one, scope two, and scope three. What is what are these scopes all about? Uh, also in respect to the tourists. Yeah. So uh, the, the scope framework is a, is a scope that's been developed internationally. is used wide, widely to to sort of categorize the emissions. So scope one has to do with direct emissions from, in this case, an event. Uh, so it's for example the the cars that you drive to. Uh, to go from one place to the other at the organization level. So lo the logistics aspect of it. Scope two is everything that has to do with the energy. So heating, uh, not in the summer, but uh, uh, cooling, and uh, also electricity, the, the, the lights and so on. And then scope three is usually the, the largest and it's true in, in the case of the Tour de Suisse. It's everything that's indirect. So that's the contribution of, of the teams as they travel, it's the contribution of the media, uh, the police and the spectators as well. So therefore scope 3 is mainly the biggest part of, of the CO2 emissions of the event of the Tour de Suisse. That's why we have to work on, right? Yes, exactly. And it's the toughest to address because oftentimes you don't have any control of it. You can, uh, you can uh, raise awareness, for example, with your spectators, but obviously uh, you, you do have to, uh, to keep the flexibility to let them uh, move as, as they need, as they want, and so on, as it's convenient to them. So it's very difficult to address, but uh, it's really uh, where, where the impact can be the, the greatest. Yeah, cool. Um, we are sitting together for quite a while, uh, wo working on, on the project of reducing um, the footprint of the Tour de Suisse. Um, we, we've chosen you because you are an expert on, on that topic. Um, we set some targets as well mm -hmm. uh, regarding our uh, reduction plans. Uh, we have now a target to reduce the CO2 emissions uh, by 50% until 2027. What do you think? We will we manage to reach these targets? Yeah, it's definitely a very, um, a very uh, aggressive. Not the word I'm looking for. The right word. A, a very. Uh, very high target, a high bar to pass. But I think it's totally possible because um, it comes to, as I said, mobility is, is a great deal. And in Switzerland, we have very good public transportation. So influencing uh, 
the constituents to think about that, I think there's a lot of opportunities in that respect. Uh, it is an aggressive target, even compared to, to the other organizations uh, in the sports industry. Um, you are part of the United Nations Sports for uh, Ac Climate Action, so called uh, S4CA, and uh, you are a bit uh, farther along in terms of, of your thinking at, at how fast you want to reduce these, uh, these targets. Um, but working together and in your commitment, I think it's, it's totally possible to get there. You did the first analysis last year based on the facts we had uh, throughout uh, 2022. In which areas do we have the highest potential to reduce the CO2 emissions? Yeah, so, uh, so last year when we did that, we, uh, we laid out about 20 strategies and started thinking about where to focus. It comes uh, quite a bit at this point to mobility. So the, the, the mobility of the teams with, with whom we started engaging and the mobility of the spectators, again, back to this scope three concept. Uh, and, uh, and beyond that, uh, you can think of uh, the race itself. You can think about the energy consumption, the waste consumption, working with the local organizers, the local committees to, to look at what happens on sites yeah. and, and so on. So what, what um, measurements or, or what um, ideas and action plans did, did we set up now to reduce uh, the, the CO2 emissions in, in for instance, uh, talking about spectators, mm -hmm. what is planned? So this year, uh, the, the focus in my mind is really about awareness and starting to, uh, to set uh, the path for reductions. And so at the spectator level, uh, we started putting together some initiatives in the context of awareness. Um, and, and one of them really, uh, the one that, that leads to action is, a, is a, a climate challenge that was put in place in our app. And so uh, it's accessible on your fan zone. And the idea is really to get spectators to participate, subscribe to that challenge, and then leading to the race, to think about maybe one time using a, uh, a bicycle instead of a car to go in town or maybe use the public transport to go to work once a week and then during the race to mirror that by coming to the race maybe on a, on a bicycle or use public transport as well and so there will be some uh, cool prizes put, put in place to, uh, to make this more fun and, um, and so you can read more on, on, the, on the website there's no no uh, no trip that's too small. Even if the race passes in your village and it's three, two kilometers away, instead of taking the car, just think about walking to it or dust off the bike and put a few kilometers on the bike. Uh, you mentioned also the, the World Tour teams uh, yeah. taking part in the, in the Tour de Suisse. Um, of course, they do a lot of traveling as well. They have, they have their uh, cars, they have their, their buses with them. Um, I know we have been in touch with the teams to figure out what, what they are doing towards uh, sustainability. What, what is your experience with them? Did they react on our uh, requests? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with what came through. So we reached out to all of the teams in, uh, in March and we got quite a bit of, of return of responses to, from them. Of course, there is an array of, of activities today taking place from big teams to, to smaller teams in terms of what they are capable of doing. It also matters uh, to some extent what the partner is doing. They, they, they coordinate between sponsors and the team itself. Uh, we've seen things such as uh, uh, placing solar panels on vehicles, on support vehicles and on buses to sort of transform the use of energy. We see, uh, we see uh, uh, teams uh, using different policies for traveling so that uh, when the, the travels are short or inland, uh, they avoid uh, flying. So it's quite a bit going on. There's other things that are quite innovative, such as, uh, for example, putting out auctions of uh, frames and then uh, taking that money and investing in climate actions or di direct actions. Some teams are bringing their athletes to uh, tree planting sites of season uh, in order to, uh, to promote action at at the individual level. So on all levels, uh, people are working towards uh, a more yeah. sustainable uh, Tour de Suisse. Um, 
The last point you mentioned uh, was was the local uh, committees, yeah. the OCs of of the different stage stage uh, villages or, or cities we have. Mm -hmm. um, what about that? Do do you go to them as well to figure out what they're doing? Yeah, so that's another initiative that's on the way. We're going to survey them uh, uh, right now in, in this coming. So definitely between before the race and uh, the idea is to understand what they do. And same, same, same thing, to raise awareness at the end, we are going to publish everything we get. Uh, we hope that the information will help some, steer new ideas. Uh, we see a lot of happening, uh, for example, in organizing parking to uh, to be more efficient in the cities around how how the cars are being used. So external parking and transport, which is a, a good first step. A lot going on on the, on the waste management, on the, the the offers that are made in terms of food at the event, so that there are uh, uh, meat substitutes being offered as well. So it's, it's all in motion, I'd say, both in the context of the teams and in the context of the, the committees. It's clearly that there is motion, there's more that can be done. It's not all solved yet, but uh, it's encouraging to see these directions taking place. Now for the Tour de Suisse, uh, the partners are also really important, important who, who help us finance uh, this, this event or enabling us even to, to um, organize this event. Um, what is, what is, is there the issue? Do we have issues with the partners at the Tour de Suisse or what do you think? Uh, do we have to go further uh, regarding partners or are they already in place with their sustainability strategies? Mm -hmm. So what we see in the, in this, so this, we started this year to engage all those partners and in general uh, uh, for, for many of them we, we see strategies in place. They have a plan, they start executing against that. And so at, at this stage, what we do is really work towards coordinating with what they do uh, to optimize the effort, honestly, and to, uh, to really work all together towards the, the issues that uh, we are try trying to also. Thanks a lot, Manuel. Uh, really interesting topic, a difficult topic as well. Uh, we know that it is a lot of work and we have to put in a lot of efforts uh, to be able to, to reduce the CO2 footprint of, a, of an ecological sport itself, but with an event at the back. So um, thanks a lot for helping us uh, with going into the right direction. We will do our utmost to reach our targets uh, of 50% uh, reduction by 2027 and then uh, hopefully net zero in uh, another five years. So thanks a lot and uh, you. let's go on with the hard work and uh, enjoy then the Tour de Suisse as well. If you listening to this um, chat here want to help us to reduce uh, the CO2 emissions of the Tour de Suisse, because you will uh, join and uh, visit the Tour de Suisse at the roadside, Please come in on foot, by bike or on public transport and have a look at our fan zone. Uh, at the Tour de Suisse site you will get a button called fan zone and in there you will find a lot of descriptions of um, our measurements and our initiatives as well as the previously mentioned CO2 challenge where you can measure the saving of CO2 if you come to the Tour de Suisse by bike or on foot.